Hi, welcome to episode 211 of The Corner of Knit and Tea. My name is Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry, Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at thecornerofknitandtea.com where this episode and every episode show notes will be. I have an Etsy shop called The Corner of Knit and Tea where I sell my hand spun yarns. And we have a Ravelry group called The Corner of Knit and Tea. If you haven't come and joined us, please do. So hi, how are you? I am recording a day early. It is uh, Sunday. No, I'm not recording a day early. I was going to, but I didn't. It is Sunday, December 23rd. We are getting ready to celebrate Christmas Eve and Christmas. And um, I thought I was going to record yesterday because my in-laws are coming today. Um, but it is the morning and they are not here yet. So um, yeah, that was a little bit of a brain fart. Um, anyway, so it is Sunday, December 23rd. I hope you have had a lovely week. Um, we have had a busy week wrapping up everything that needs to be wrapped up before the holidays start. Um, we're not entirely off next week. My husband will go to work um, for a little bit later in the week and I will probably do a little bit from home later in the week. Um, but we are looking forward to kind of a relaxed next week to 10 days while we celebrate, like I said, Christmas and New Year's. So I hope that you are having a lovely time wherever you are. And if you celebrate, I wish you the best for you and your family. And if you don't celebrate, I at least wish you a uh, quiet time of crafting at this time of year. So I have lots to show you and lots to talk about. So let's get right into the podcast. Today I am drinking um, a new to me tea, sort of. Um, this is Tulsi tea and uh, it was given to me by my aunt. Um, she sent a Hanukkah package this week and or actually a couple weeks ago and I'll show you. She, she sent me a mug as well. Tulsi is um, an Indian green tea. It's an Ayurvedic green tea blend um, and it's supposed to be um, uh, sort of a it promotes digestion and good health um and it is delicious it's a green tea that tastes either a little bit like cloves or a little bit lemony sort of depending on the variation um and this one has green tea tulsi herb cinnamon stevia flower um and so it is just a nice blend and i am drinking it in this beautiful mug that my aunt sent and it's kind of an interesting shape, um, but so I have brewed some up. I have actually uh, drinking some Tulsi tea, just the straight Tulsi before. Um, I got a sample and I can't remember whether it was sent to me in a package. I think I might have ordered it um, and it was quite good. It's like a little spicy and not exactly what you would expect um, from just a plain green tea leaf, um, but I expect that this will be quite delicious. Oh yeah, it's definitely, um, it's lighter than I thought, but it's got a little bit of the cinnamon and clove kind of taste, so it's very good. And like I said, my lovely mug, I don't even know where it came from, but um, lovely mug. So um, that is what I'm drinking this week. So let's talk about the knits. First of all, I do have a finished knit. I finished my sweater weather socks. So I showed these to you. Um, a couple weeks ago, this is Sweater Weather by Nomadic Knits, um, or Nomadic Yarns, and um, it is a beautiful striping. Um, it's got six stripes, and I never did determine whether that's green or brown. I still think it looks brown. It might be an army green. It's a muted rainbow for fall, and I bought this a while ago and really, really wanted to knit these around Rhinebeck and couldn't find it, so I um, waited and found it, and I decided they would be perfect fall socks. Um, the reason I'm displaying them this way is because I kind of knit them big. I didn't really intend to, but they're like too big for my sock blockers, so that's why I didn't even bother putting them on there because they don't look that great. Um, I did do an afterthought heel, basically a la Susan B. Anderson. Um, I put in a, uh, I put in waist yarn and then I picked up and did the afterthought heel. Um, the other thing that I used is, uh, not for the first one, but for the second one, I used, um, a video tutorial by the Bakery Bears which is available if you buy one of their patterns. And um, Kay talks about how to get a really good closed gap at the sides. Um, and part of the reason I always do um, a heel flap and gusset and I don't love short row heels is because I always get the holes at the sides. Um, and that tutorial was very, very beneficial. This sock looks much better than the first one. Haha. <laughs> um, so I would definitely recommend that if you, uh, 
Actually, I think that was the first one. But the, the second sock looks far better than the first at the heels. So um, I would definitely recommend that if you are interested. So that is another project done and dusted. The next project was sort of a review project. I showed you the yarn for it last week. This was yarn that was generously sent to me by Fairmount Fibers, who are the uh, US distributors of Monostil Uruguay. I was sent one skein of Allegria Grande, which is their superwash worsted base. Um, it's got uh, superwash and polyamide in it. It's a 75-25, and I got that in the colorway petal. And then the second thing that I, um, started was, um, or the second yarn that I held it with was um, Cabrito, which is their new mohair and polyamide blend, and that was in the Horace colorway. Um, and I did want to speak about this briefly. Um, last week after I posted, um, one of my viewers took me to task for um, using mohair, particularly in light of the recent controversy um, about mohair. And um, well, I didn't necessarily appreciate the tone she took. Um, I appreciated her letting me know because I actually had not seen all the controversy versus mohair. Um, in the last year or so, there have been some expose pieces about how um, angora goats, which is where mohair comes from, um, are treated in quite a few places, including South Africa and China. And um, there is footage of the um, angora goats being horribly mistreated to the point that um, they, uh, several large uh, fashion companies in the United States and around the world, including H&M and Zara and several others, um, have declined to use mohair in their collections until um, some sort of certification process can be found um, to kind of certify that, that the mohair comes from um, non-cruel treated, <laughs> non-cruelty um, sources. So um, I did appreciate being alerted to the controversy. And then I did a little bit of research um, and it turns out Monostil Uruguay, one of their big things is that they are World Free Trade Organization certified, um, which means uh, they uh, agree to abide by the World Free Trade Organization's um, rules about uh, treating workers and their environment and animals uh, fairly. And so while I do not have explicit proof um, that they are um, sourcing cruelty-free marina, uh, cruelty-free mohair, um, I believe based on what I have seen on their site and also the World Free Trade Organization um, that they, they have to be using ethical sources um, because that's what they're super committed to. Um, Monostil Uruguay is a collective in Uruguay and it was basically put together, um, or I should say it's a cooperative in Uruguay, and it was basically put together for the betterment of the people um, to be able to pro provide them with more stable incomes. Um, they are highly concerned about the working conditions and um, how they treat their people and so I cannot believe that they would be sourcing um, unethical sources of mohair. So while I appreciate the attention to the controversy, um, I uh, firmly believe that this is a, an ethically sourced yarn. They appear on several um, ethically sourced yarn uh, lists. So um, I am going to go ahead and say that I'm okay with using this particular brand, um, but I appreciate you drawing my attention to it. And um, that's about all I'm gonna say on that matter. So, um, like I said, I used uh, Allegria Grande in the petal colorway, which my ball has seen better days. Um, and then I used the Kid Mohair in the Horace colorway, which was a teal with a bunch of pinks and oranges. So I held them together and the uh, item I chose to create was the Bandana Cowl by Pearl Soho. It is a free pattern um, and calls for a bulky weight of yarn, but I decided that if I used um, if I used the two held together on the same needles, it would approximate a bulky weight yarn, and I created this great little bandana cowl. And as you can see, the um, cabrito added a lovely sort of marled texture to it, um, and it didn't come out exactly like I had anticipated. I had actually anticipated that the yarn would read more teal than this, um, but I am pleased with how it came out, and it is super soft and... Um, 
You can still see I wove in the ends, but I didn't clip them until after I had blocked, but it is just a nice um, right around your neck um, and go right under a coat easily and just a nice uh, fuzzy cowl. I don't think I have enough left to really do. I haven't weighed it yet. Um, they said that the cowl took about 130 yards um, and it's worked up on a size 10 needle. So I will need to weigh and see what I have left. I don't think I have enough to do a hat left, um, but if I do, I might do a little hat with it. So that is my cowl and it is lovely. Um, and so I would highly recommend this. Um, and I have a slightly sensitive neck and that was a little bit itchy but not terrible um so I think it will probably be okay um but so I can recommend this it came out beautifully and it's got beautiful drape I'll take photos and put a full blog review later um but thank you to Fairmount Fibers and um I always love using the Monos yarns um in addition to being ethically conscious they are um absolutely lovely to work with so um again that is the bandana cowl by Pearl Soho a free pattern and um the Monos del Uruguay Alegria Grande and Cabrito so that was a super quick knit, um, kind of what I call instant gratification knitting. Um, and I love that. Every so often, it's really nice to have a project that you can just get through quickly. So um, let's go on to the other things on my needles. So I am still working on and but plan to finish this weekend because I really do not have very much left. I am still working on my um, Canyonlands, which is a shawl by Nim Teasdale. And I am working on it in uh, my own hand spun, which was a uh, double bump of uh, Hello Yarn Fiber in the uh, like Berries on a Bush colorway. And this is what I have so far. And I am absolutely loving it. And I had to laugh because remember last week I told you that I really liked these blue chunks up here and my um, friends at Knit Night really liked the little splotches of blue throughout and then I got another big blue chunk. So that made me very very happy but I love how it's coming out um, and it is just gorgeous. I also like that stripe of yellow right in there. That really came out neat. Um, it is not quite as wide as I guess it's wide enough. I don't know. Um, the way this is constructed it gets very deep very fast um, and so I wanted it to be really really wide so it was easy to wrap around um, and it is not as easy as I think it will be but of course I can use a shawl pin or something and I haven't decided exactly how to block it because um, it is garter stitch and I love squishy garter stitch and if I block it depending on how severely I block it it will um, it will give me the length that I want but then it won't be a squishy garter stitch as I want so I haven't quite decided exactly how I'm going to do it uh, but this is my Canyonlands by Nim Teasdale in my own hand spun and the reason that I say that I'm going to be done this week is because this is what I have left and I don't know if you can tell you can see light through it so I do not have that much left my guess is I probably have half a dozen rows and bind off left um, because the rows are pretty long at this point so this will be done this weekend I am sure and I'll be blocking it and by next week I will be able to bring it back and show you but again, this is Canyonlands. I really, really like it. Um, my suspicion is that I have between seven and 800 yards in this bump of fiber. Like I said, it was a double bump of fiber. And um, what I did is I uh, ripped one of them into strips and then I spun the other straight through to give me a fractal yarn, which is why it is striping as it is. Because as you can see, there are very short color runs and then there are longer color runs. So um, that is, uh, I'm super, super pleased with this. This is a great one, um, perfect for hand spun. So um, I can highly recommend it. It's pretty intuitive once you get started. Um, the first part is um, charted and sort of written out, but then after that, once you get the flow of the pattern, I found that I haven't had to look back at the pattern for a while. That is a paid for pattern on Ravelry, but um, I really like it and I am super pleased and I hope to bring you this garment next week to show you. So that brings me to the next thing that I have been working on this week. Um, I don't know why, but I felt motivated to pick up my scrappy ripple afghan. Now this is the, one of the few things that I am actually crocheting because in general I am not a crocheter. Um, I am self-taught, I know how to do a few things, um, but I don't find it terribly intuitive. Um, so for the most part, I generally don't. Um, but about, well, it was 2017, so almost two years ago now, 
probably, um, I decided to start a scrappy Ripley Afghan blanket. Um, the pattern that I'm using is Neat Ripple, which is a free pattern by Attic24, um, and that is Lucy, and she is lovely and has many crochet patterns on Ravelry and tutorials on her blog, and I have actually done enough of the rippling um, that I don't need to look at the pattern anymore and can pick it up and put it down whenever I want, which is really nice because I don't have to remember exactly what I'm doing. I still have to watch what I'm doing, so this is not the best one for like watching movies or whatnot because um, I still have to pay attention pretty closely. So um, this is my Ripple Afghan. I have showed this to you before. I think I'm probably getting close to two feet and I will tell you that um, when I picked it back up the other day um, I had started probably... <laughs> I think I started right about where this pink is. So I added um, a bunch of yarns. I added a bunch of Christmassy yarns. So this right here, this green section, this was the Christmas lights. Um, a sorry, oh, Christmas tree that I knit myself socks from and uh, Miles. And then I also have um, some Zen yarn garden above that, the white with the with the red um, and purple uh, splotches. That Zen yarn garden. Above that, I don't remember what that yarn is, but then above that is some more Zen Yarn Garden yarn, um, some of the uh, uh, mountain colors that I just did the socks in for them, the Twizzlefoot in the Snapdragon colorway, and then some green, which was my 100 Ravens um, gradient that I did uh, uh, my Buccaneer shawl in, and then up here is some... Um, this might be, I had thought it was pistachio, but I don't think it is. I had thought it was pistachio from Hedgehog Fibers, but I'm not sure that it is. So I don't actually know what that is. Um, but so I've put in probably, um, I would say one, two, three and a half inches since I picked it up this last time. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, again, this is just a sock yarn scrapple Ripley Afghan. It is just my leftovers and trades and I have several bags full. Um, and I don't know, I just every so often I get a wild hair. Now it's not the same everywhere because like I've got some purples over here. And you know, it's just and over here is my um, Christmas lights uh, or my this was Christmas socks from a couple of years ago. Um, I just, I felt like putting all the Christmas yarns in together, so I did. And this is some Lamy Toes leftovers. Um, and so I've just got all kinds of things in this blanket and it makes me so happy. Um, and I don't feel the urge to work on it all the time, but like I said, the urge struck and I decided, you know what, who am I to um, not give in to the urge? So that is what I have been working on in my spare time. It's been, um, I find that I can only crochet for about an hour before my hands start to hurt. It's just a different way of holding my hands than knitting. And I have practiced knitting for so long now that I can knit for hours and hours and hours. Um, so basically what I've been doing is I've been doing all of whatever crafting I wanna do until about an hour before it's time for me to go to bed. And then I've picked up the blanket and added whatever I get to, which is usually a row or so a day. Um, but I have been super, super thrilled um, and happy to work on this, and I plan on working on it through the holiday um, as long as I really, really want to work on it. So that is my scrappy Ripley crochet afghan, and it is making me happy this week. So let's talk about the next two cast-ons, because I have two. The first is my Christmas Eve cast-on. And um, I decided to cast on some socks and I actually have some Christmas yarn that I bought at the end of last season. And I did not knit it up in my Christmas in July, but I did want to knit it up. So I decided it would be my Christmas Eve cast on. That is the wrong label. Um, it is Vesper Sock Yarn by Knitterly Things. And it is um, her, it's not new anymore. It was new when I bought it last year. <laughs> 75% um, superwash wool, 25% nylon, 430 yards of self-striping goodness in joyful noise. Um, and so this is joyful noise. It is a bunch of different greens, red, pink, and white. Um, and it's got kind of, it's got di several different greens. It's got kind of a minty green. It's got a grassy green. It's got like a blue spruce green. And then it's got white and red and pink. And I decided that since I didn't want to mess up the striping, I found some pink. This is probably, um, it's 
probably Dale Uli Baby Garn. I don't know. I bought it in a D stash and it was just, it was like a million bottles of different colors of this. Um, and I think that will go really nicely. And that is going to be my cuffs and heels and toes. And then I'm hoping to get a pair of socks for Roxy out of this. Um, so I was thinking about, I always do a Valentine's Day package for the kids and I realize it's Christmas. It's not Valentine's Day, but Valentine's Day is like seven weeks after Christmas. And if I want to send socks, I need to start thinking about it now. And I have some leftover of the Rhinebeck sweater weather socks over here. So I was thinking about making Miles a pair of socks out of these because I don't have a ton left. And I was thinking about making Roxy a pair of these because it has red and pink in it, which is also sort of Valentine's Day, except it's got all the green stripes. So it's probably Christmassy. So I can't decide. Um, I probably will make her a pair of socks out of this as soon as I finish. Um, but uh, I don't know if I'll hold them till next year or not. Anyway, so that is my Christmas Eve cast on. I am thrilled, excited. Uh, it is going to be so much fun. I love Christmas Eve cast on. So then I also have another cast on that I'm going to do as soon as I finish my hand spun scarf. It's another hand spun scarf. But this one involves a giveaway for you guys. So let's talk about it. I was lucky enough to receive a copy of um, Hunter Hammerson's Curls 3. Now, if you're not um, familiar with curls, Hunter Hammerson does these shawls. Um, they are called versatile wearable wraps to knit at any gauge. Um, basically, she developed some shawls that start at a point and work and get bigger and bigger and bigger and are knit basically sort of modularly. So each um, repeat, you add another kind of module to it. Um, and they are built in such a way that you can knit with whatever yarn you have. So if you only have one skein of special fingering yarn, you can turn it into a curl. If you have a huge skein of hand spun, you can turn it into a curl. Basically, you can knit as long as you want. Um, the other nice thing is that because they are written modularly, um, you can basically knit in any size yarn at any gauge. Now, of course, this will change the yardage required to complete the shawl, um, because obviously if you're upsizing a pattern, it may take you more yardage to achieve the same goal, um, you know, to achieve the same size. But they are all these great patterns um, that basically fit any gauge yarn, any, le any length yarn, and you just start and stop as you have yarn. So um, this is her third book. I was super interested in her first book, although I haven't purchased it, but I have like half a dozen of those in my favorites. Um, and the third book just came out recently and I was sent a copy to give away, to review and give away to you guys. So I am actually going to be knitting a shawl um, from this book and I'm going to give away the book to you guys. So um, this is for a giveaway for next week. Um, and the deal is that you should leave a comment on this podcast here. I'm not doing it on the blog. I'm not doing it in the Ravelry group. It's gotta be on the podcast on YouTube. Um, tell me which of the shawls in this book you would like to knit. So let me show you which shawls they are. So the beginning um, talks about, it's got an introduction and kind of a listing, uh, a little photo pictograph of all the shawls included. And it talks about the anatomy of a curl, which is basically how they are constructed. And I'm gonna show you this page because um, these were the two that I actually thought about knitting. And I'm actually knitting, I'm going to knit this one, which is, I believe, Rhododite. Um, I will go through each of the shawls, but you can see that they stretch out, they start at a point, they work all the way through um, to sort of make them or actually I can't remember I think this is the point that they start at yes this is the point that they start at and they get bigger and bigger and bigger and they work modularly through and you can just keep going as long as you have yarn so and she talks about like the five pieces of the curl she's got the little diagram in here to show you kind of how she builds them modularly so the first shawl in the book and she's got tips about charts. She's got tips about blocking. She's got hints, um, a part about gauge and needle sizing. So this book is very complete. Uh, speckles and gradients and how to use different kinds of yarns. So the first one is How Light, which is kind of, it looks like a cross between a ribbed and a chevron. I don't think it's brioche. I think it's just um, ribbing kind of, and it's got some chevron in there. And then each, um, each, pattern has um, some discussion, some written directions, and then also a chart. So you can easily um, complete it and then kind of a final glamour shot. So let me show you the other shawls in the book. 
This was the other one um, that I thought about. This is Lipidolite, and it is um, a little bit of chevron and lace, sort of. Um, and I really liked that. And it looks like kind of, you can see here, it looks kind of wavy. Anyway, so we've got instructions, chart, and glamour shot. And then the next one is Merlinite, and this one looks mostly lacy. And instructions, chart, and another glamour shot. Um, this one almost looks honeycombish. It's called Indicolite. See, and it's got kind of a trellis or honeycombish look to it. Um, and all of these, um, well, okay, I should say that. Um, uh, the last one, Indicolite, that I showed you was written for a DK. Um, some of them are written for fingering, some of them are written for sport, but again, you can substitute any yarn you would like. Um, this one's really beautiful. It looks almost like a little bit of cables, and this is in Tibetan Dream, which is, um, which is by Bijou Basin, um, which is lovely. They, they have luxury yak, um, yarns, and, um, that one is for a sport weight. And that one's actually a gradient. You can see it in the glamour shot. So you can knit these with all kinds of yarns. Um, and then this one has kind of leaves at the edge. This is, this is called uh, chalcopyrite. I'm pronouncing all of these wrong, I'm sure. But you can see there are like leaves right at the edges there. And then, oh, and that one was knit with a gradient too. It starts at like gray at the top and ends at yellow. Um, and this one's kind of stripey. It's called Kyanite. So you can see that one's got stripes. So if you have minis or um, stash or scrap yarns that you would like to use, I'm sure you could do that. Um, and then this one is called Zincite. And this one's again a little bit lacy and it looks like a, some kind of a gradient yarn. Is it gradient? No, actually it looks like it's a... Um, not a mini skein pack, but it's got several different colors. So, and they're basically knit as stripes. So it actually probably is um, like maybe one of those Miss Babs packs of different colors, mini skeins. Uh, and then this is called Appetite. And this one is knit with a fingering weight yarn in a gradient set. And it looks like this one's got some um, like slipped and crossed stitches in it. I don't know if you can tell. Like in there. So, um, and then the final one is um, Rhodonite. So this is the one that I'm gonna knit. And this is very chevron-y. And um, the colors reminded me a lot of a skein of yarn that I have. Oh, I'm sorry. And then the last one is Cacoxonite, which is really cool. It's knit with um, a gradient yarn and then a plain color. So, and that's the cover shawl. So um, this, I'll show you what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do the Rodenite. And um, I am doing it in a skein of hand spun that I spun ages and ages ago. This is a two if by hand in Foxy and it is uh, pinks and magentas and um, some grays. And so I think it's gonna look perfect. I know there's a lot of talk about how a lot of people knit shawls um, or knit garments in um, the colorways that are in the photo. And I do think that's funny because sometimes I don't do that, um, particularly if it's not a color that I'm very into. Um, for instance, if I see a beautiful like yellow sweater, I'm not going to knit it in yellow. I'm going to come up with a different color. Um, but I do think it's funny because in this case, um, I was like, oh, I should totally use this hand spun. So this is hand spun fingering weight singles. Um, I spun this ages and ages ago. If you've been with me for a while, I think I spun this when I was doing the podcast so it's not more than you know three years ago um, but I feel like it's been ages and I've been looking for the right thing to use it for I think I might have oh I was gonna do a fox paws but then I realized that fox paws um, does better if you use all different colors of yarn because if you change the you need to change each row it doesn't work as well if you have gradients um, at least from what I can tell anyway so I am using this to knit Rodenite 
and um, this book is for giveaway for you. So I have a copy of the pattern that I'm gonna use on my own, so I'm gonna give this book to you. It is a beautiful book. It's printed on um, high quality glossy paper. Like I said, it's got written instructions, it's got charts, it's got beautiful photos of the shawls. It retails for $21.95. It is purchasable online, so if you don't win, you can go to Hunter Hammerson's Ravelry shop um, and purchase the digital download, or you can purchase the book and then at the back of the book, there is usually, hang on, hang on two seconds because I'm pretty sure normally in the book, I don't see it. Usually when you get, maybe she didn't send it because this is a review copy. Usually when you get, when you purchase a book from her, you also get a digital download um, code for Ravelry, but I don't see it in this one. Um, but that may be because like I said, it was a review copy and this was the first printing. So I don't see it back here, um, but that's fine. Um, oh, also at the back, she's got a, she's got a list of all the yarns that she used in there and where to find them. So that's kind of nice. Um, uh, anyway, as I said, this is up for grabs. Um, international entries are just fine. I will, em I will mail it overseas. It will be a new year's gift because you will not be getting it before Christmas. Um, but leave a comment on, uh, this post, uh, on this, uh, YouTube blog. <laughs> And um, I will draw a winner next week and send that out to you. So this is Curls 3 by Hunter Hammerson. Many thanks to um, Hunter Hammerson who actually sent it to Stitchcraft Marketing and um, thanks for giving me a copy to review and give away because it is a beautiful book and I am excited to knit a shawl. So um, yes, Curls 3 by Hunter Hammerson. So that covers um, all the knitting and the giveaway. Let me take a sip of tea. I'll cover spinning. We'll talk about um, the end of the gift along and uh, the start of the next uh, along and then we'll uh, be done for today. So um, this week I spun a beautiful braid of a uh, nest fiber called Foxy. Actually, it's really funny because both of these are called Foxy. They're not the same, but, um, and this is reds and oranges and pinks and purples, and it is lovely. And actually it reminds me of the holiday season. So, um, I think that is lovely. You'll have to forgive my, I had the yellow, um, scrap yarn right near there and it's all curly and crazy, but that is the skein. It needs to be washed. Um, it is fluffy and plump and it's probably a little thicker than I wanted, but I still think I got between about 350 well, probably about 350 yards, which makes it kind of a sport weight. Um, this is superwash merino, so it would make lovely socks or other accessories. I'm going to wash it. It's probably going to puff up. It is super, super next to the skin soft, um, and it will go up in the shop sometime this week. Like I said, I'm going to wash it today. So that is that one done and dusted. And um, if this appeals to you, I just love these colors. They're so pretty. Reminds me of candy and the holidays. So this week I am going to do something different. Um, my boss for the holidays got me something called Spin This Box. And it came in um, kind of, or sorry, it's called The Spinning Box. I lied. So you can see The Spinning Box there. And it is all about sending you a variety of little things to use together. Um, or separately um it's a variety of fibers and so this is called whatever holiday you celebrate make it a happy one so this is like a little happy holidays and the box is holiday themed it is based on christmas hanukkah winter solstice hogmanay kwanzaa pancha ganapati um the laba festival and saint lucia's day so there are um like seven or eight packages of fiber in here i'll show you for instance this one is from what the flock hand dyed fiber and this is kwanzaa and it is a bit of fiber in like pinks and or red and black and green um and everyone is kind of the same way um there are some roll logs there's some um there's like a bat. This one is Hogmanay and it's all red and fiery, reds and oranges, and it's a little bat. Anyway, each one is a bit of fiber to spin, and um, I think I'm actually going to spin this box separately and see what I come up with. Um, and then I don't remember if I had talked about if those little um, wooden sheep and uh, wooden alpacas. I think I've showed you these in the past. I got them from Juniper Moon Farm. Um, and I need to knit some sweaters for them. So I think I'm going to spin this stuff up this week and then knit little sweaters in like the Christmas colorways. Um, and so I think that will be fun. Usually I don't end up, um, 
doing kind of a spinning box with all kinds of different things in it but I thought this would be a really fun one to spin up especially since it's all holiday themed and we just had winter solstice and we're in the middle of Christmas and Hanukkah has passed and all the other holidays I thought it would be really nice to spin it up this week like I said it is a big box of goodness and then it's also got some fun other things in here some candies some hot chocolate um, a few little extras and so that was a really cool gift from my boss and I'm excited to spin this up this week um, and like I said I think I'm gonna spin up each little bit separately unto itself so I can see what it does um, and actually what I may do is um, I may actually spin them all at once like all the singles at once and then just break the singles up as I pull them off the bobbin and ply them only with themselves so um, I think that's what I'm gonna do this week and if I finish this um, I actually have this is kind of fun um, I think all these little bits are really cool I have a huge bin full of all the little bits that I've gotten from the last several ply aways and um, other things where they give you like a little fiber samples and stuff and so I was thinking I might pull that out and just basically sample spin this week just feel a bunch of different fibers in a bunch of different preps and do a bunch of different little skeins and knit little sweaters out of them or um, not so much with this box but I think with the other stuff I may actually just make a big mongo skein like I did when I plied all my ends all my leftover ends together um, and I think I might just make a big mondo skein and I don't know what I'll do with it but it's just little bits and pieces of sampling everything so I think that's gonna be my spinning for this week so that brings me to sort of the final closing um, we have a few more days left on the gift along remember the rules are it had to be uh, crafted between November 1st and December 31st and it has to be a gift for someone else it can be uh, crocheted woven sewn knit uh, spun um, we're pretty open on crafts it just has to be uh, something for somebody else um, it's kind of funny I talked about it last week on the podcast and all of a sudden I have a ton of entries so I think people just kind of forgot that they could submit for that I did show you the prize last week it is a project bag and a skein of uh, the Freya hand paints it's a gradient um, in their uh, DK weight I think um, and so that is a prize for anyone who contributes um, I technically I guess I won't be drawing for that prize until after December 31st so I won't be announcing it next week on the podcast I will however announce the winner of curls next week and get that out to you um, and then the final thing is that starting January 1st I will be starting the what I used to call the selfish craft along which is basically we spend November or I don't know if you do but I do spend November and December doing a lot of crafting for other people so January is all about picking out a project to spoil yourself with um, and I'm sort of combining that with an I've always wanted to um, so basically all you need to do is pick something you've always wanted to do Maybe it's a technique you've always wanted to learn. Maybe it's a pattern you've always wanted to knit. Maybe it is a skein you have always wanted to knit or crochet up or a bump of fiber you have always wanted to spin or something you have always wanted to sew. I am happy making it a um, multi craftual along um, and that will run January 1st through the 31st and then I will uh, come up with some prizes for that. I'll show those once we're in the new year. So I will see you next week, um, next weekend, which will be just before the end of the year. And then I'm going to talk about some of my goals for the my resolutions for the year, um, a little bit about um, how I felt I did this year in my crafting. And uh, of course, I'll show you whatever I finished or am working on next week because I should have the Christmas Eve cast on, hopefully my finished hand spun show and another one started. So this has been a long podcast, but I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you celebrate Christmas or the holidays with your family, I hope that you are enjoying some free time, um, maybe just a little bit more relaxed pace and uh, spending time with your loved ones and friends. Um, I wish you a wonderful holiday week and I will see you next week. Um, and I will say, as I always do, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you next time. Bye.